Everyone, welcome to another edition of Opus. If you are just logging in right now, one that you're excited about this, you're ready to go in. Every week we try to bring you cutting edge information that we've never brought to you before in OMG, and that's what Opus is all about. Uh, if my screen looks a little weirder than normal, uh, I'm away from home. I really don't like working on a laptop. But, uh, that's what I'm uh, forced to do this time. So uh, I'm right across the bay from uh, my good friend Ryan. So I'll introduce him first. Ryan, how's it going, man? Fantastic, man. How you doing? Doing good, man. Trying to trying to stay out of this rain that's here. I'm trying to stay out of the Zika range too, man. It's uh, it's hit Miami. Did you hear that? Yes, I, yes, I, I, I did. So uh, as long as I think, I, I think you're right in the hot zone, actually. I am, actually. I've been staying inside. <laughs> <the time. laughs> right. But then we, we, Ryan and I are in Miami. We go all the way up, maybe 2,000 miles, a couple buffaloes, a couple horse rides, and a polar bear away. It's Mr. Derek Kowasiak. What's up, man? Hey, man. How's it going? Oh, good. What's it? What's it going on in uh, Canada? What's the weather there? Uh, it's it was it was like ninety two, and it's just starting a thunderstorm right now. So I might get kicked off again. <laughs> like, I don't think they got that yeah. warm up there. Oh yeah, I know. It gets hot and, and hot and humid right now. So whenever it's like that, we get a huge thunderstorm right after. But yeah, we're long ways apart. Each other, my friend. It's two different. Yeah. Like we're a couple of moose, a couple of moose rides away. So let me go ahead and make you a recognizer, uh, Derek, while we're sure. doing this. So what we're going to do is tonight, guys. We're not going to waste any time. There's there's no need to do Q and A. If you've got Q and A, you could put it in the paid group in Project Assimilation. If you got any questions about any lessons that we've done, what we want to do with Opus is keep it fast. Keep it uh, just give you what you came here for is a lesson and to get on with what we're doing. What I want to do is just touch on what we did last week. How many of you guys uh, used looping? I want you to give me hashtag looping if you've already started to implement that and you're getting some good feedback. You've seen people, you're actually getting clicks. It's like help people uh, that you've been able to maybe use it to get some followers, maybe to push something over to another site. So if you started to implement that, let me see. There's got to be more than three or four people. So. If you've started it, let me see it. I want to see that you got something out of it. I had several people tell me that they were able to this client things, push some traffic back over to them. Got a lot of positive feedback about it last week. And uh, that's just kind of the cool stuff that we would like to be able to show you guys so you can get some benefit out of it. So if you haven't watched it yet, go back and watch it last week. Actually, start back in all of Opus from when Ryan Stewart started just all the way through it's some really groundbreaking stuff. I know a lot of you are tied up in the Wi-Fi stuff right now, which was incredible stuff. Follow back in looping. Tonight we're going to get into something a little different. Uh, it's you know it's search engine optimization, but I said that Opus would never be about links. It's not going to be about PBNs and how to set stuff up, things like that. But there's something very important. And our special guest tonight, I've known him for a while. He's very young, very 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 talented. I've been working with him a lot. I like use him for uh, certain services that, that he that he has. Him and I have became pretty good friends over the last year. I know Derek and him have a have a business together, and uh, tonight he's really uh, come up with some really innovative ways that he's used schema. And schema is one of these things to where you know we really haven't talked about at all. And Derek, I can't recall us ever talking about or teaching anything to do with schema in the last couple years, have we? Um, I think we touched on it maybe a little bit, but uh, yeah, nothing in depth at right. all. I mean, it, yeah, it gets complicated quickly. So, <laughs> right. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to let uh, in tonight. We're going to introduce you to the special guest, and that is Angel Cruz. What I want you to do is I want you to give me hashtag angel, and I, I want you to just let him know. Give him the OMG welcome. Hashtag angel. I just want to see that name waterfalling all the way down there. And 
You want to talk about someone that's literally got a lot of SEO knowledge under his belt that's very, very young. I've been impressed with him ever since the first time I've met him. And you know that it's very hard for me to bring people on that I don't believe in. Uh, you know, it's very hard to get on either assimilation or on Opus or anything like that. So, uh, you know, I've been impressed with everything that he's been able to do. So what I'm going to do is we're not going to waste any time in what we're going to do. We're just going to throw it over to Angel. We're going to let him run with it, and then uh, we'll like meet back up a little bit later, and hopefully you guys are going to get blown away. I've got a chance to sneak peek at what he's going to show tonight. I'm pretty excited that you guys are going to get it. So, Angel, how's it going, man? It's going great, Karin. Thanks for having me, and thanks for the cool introduction. Appreciate it. Yeah. Great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the presenter and you just take it and run away with it, man. Let's do it. All right. Can you guys see my screen? I can see it. Yeah, we're good. All right, cool. All right. Well, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Angel Cruz. Um, you know, I've been an SEO for about eight years and been doing it full time for about three. I'm pretty young, like Kyan said, I'm 26. I'm also a father of two boys, awesome, awesome kids. Uh, I got an eight-year-old and a seven-year-old. And uh, I, was, I was raised in New Jersey all my life uh, since last year and then moved over to Texas, which is a huge change. So I'm used to the snow, the blizzards, and then coming out to all these hailstorms and thunderstorms. I'm sure uh, Stephen Floyd can relate to that. But um, it's been a really cool transition. And, uh, you know, one of the main reasons why I relocated was I needed change and I, I, I needed to cut all the distractions out of my life. So sometimes you need to make drastic decisions to pretty much have a breakthrough. So that's one of the main reasons why I moved to Texas. And um, I do work behind the scenes with a lot of marketers, brilliant marketers uh, like Cotton Grammar, uh, Derek, of course, and a few underground, un underground guys. And... Um, you know, always on the innovative side of things. So, you know, I like to research and see what um, what's going on in search engines and see what kind of uh, new strategies can be used to either make money or to share with other people to help them make money. So that's a little bit about myself. And, um, you know, I'm nobody special. Uh, I'm a college dropout. Uh, I used to be a drug dealer in high school. You know, I like to be real with whoever I'm speaking to just so you guys know I'm a real person. But I was a little different, you know. I took the money I made selling marijuana to fund courses online. So I'm about 17, 18 years old, and I'm going through all of these courses, how to, you know, build an email list, how to make money with CPA, pretty much just chasing my tail, you know. And I did that for about four years. And uh, once I stumbled across SEO, that's kind of where the light bulb went off, and I kind of ran with it. So I started, you know, studying and learning as much as I can. Um, I came across uh, SourceWave, OMG, of course, and uh, just the leadership in some of these groups, it, you know, really helped me uh, pave my mindset and help me take it to the, to the next level. So, you know, I'm always grateful for uh, the beginnings. So that's a little bit about myself, and uh, today we're going to go over some structured data and schema and different ways how to use it to your advantage. So just a, a 101, um, what is structured data? It's pretty much any data that's found on the web with a high level of organization. So pretty much when you're structuring your, your data and your content, and it's very predictable in the way you're marking it up, it's easier for search engines to rank your web documents. So our goal as SEOs and marketers is we want to help Google understand exactly what it is we're doing, who we are, where we're located, and we accomplish that through schema vocabulary. So <clears throat> if you notice, uh, if you're doing searches in the web and you're starting to see all these featured snippets like, you know, recipes and instant answers, and um, I mean, there's, there's a bunch. We, we're definitely going to go into some of it, but uh, you're seeing that a lot of these uh, structured uh, snippets that are shown in the SERPs are all caused uh, by schema or uh, structured markup on your site because there's other variations of schema that you can use. So Google uh, recommends JSON-LD for your sites. You know, they actually, uh, I believe it was last year where they put it out to the public that it is the recommended format. And for those of you that have been in SEO for a while, you probably were using microdata like I was. And it still works great. You know, it's just another form of language, uh, you know, when you're marking up your site. 
but going forward, I'm I'm only using JSON LD, and this kind of gives you a description of what it is. And um, you know, Google is recommending this as the main uh, format of marking up your websites. So the knowledge graph isn't isn't that the coolest thing ever, right? The knowledge graph. So you want to know like where are they pulling all this information from? You know, they're pulling it from your own website, from social media profiles you're associated with, professional networks you're a part of, different profiles your business might be mentioned in, databases, you know, DBpedia. There's um, there's one that Google recently canceled. I think it was called like uh, Freebase. You know, they're actually converting that to something new, which is cool. But uh, they use databases to get some structured uh, content to the knowledge graph. Uh, they also pull info from Google Search and Wikipedia. So when you're looking at the knowledge graph, what you're really looking at is an entity. You know, you're looking at a GoDaddy entity right here, and you know, similar profiles they're mentioned on. You know, their Twitters, their social media profiles. Uh, how many people follow them on Google Plus? You know, different information as a, you know, stock price, founder. So this all comes back to the point of becoming an entity, right? So whenever you're doing anything online, you want to make it known to Google that you're, you're a thing or you're someone or, you know, if you're a business, you're marking up your location. You're an actual entity. So the whole, the whole point of semantic web, which ties to, you know, this whole knowledge graph conversation and schema is, um, Google's looking to find meaning behind the documents that you're publishing on the web. You know, a document can be a PDF, it could be your website, it could be any form of, you know, of, of media that you're publishing to the web. And they're looking for connections uh, that tie back to this entity that you're associating, right? And it could be, um, you know, whether it's a persona, so if you're an author and you're tying yourself to your website, you know, that's, that's creating an entity in itself. You know, you're becoming the author persona behind this entity, and uh, that's why it's important that you're you're claiming, uh, you know, profiles across these high uh, trusted websites, high DA websites, and then you're tying it together in your schema markup. And I'll get uh, into more detail about this. But um, Google, you know, one of their biggest goals is they're looking to scale this ambiguating entity data across the web, and it's almost impossible for them to do it without human assistance. That's why us as marketers and SEOs, we're actually doing them a favor by marking up our websites because it makes their search bot, it, it pretty much makes it easier for them to crawl our site and to figure out what it is. You know, they don't have to, you know, dig around all these different databases trying to figure out what your site's about. Everything is presented to them in a silver plate. So that's, you know, that's why it's very important for us to, you know, to help Google, should I say, uh, to get this information out. So uh, the same as for you guys that aren't aware with, it's pretty much telling Google what properties uh, your brand is associated with. So, you know, we could go into an example. Let me pull something up real quick. So I'm going to go to the structured data testing tool, and this becomes your best friend when you're doing a lot of structured data work. So, you know, I'm on this all the time. Uh, so we'll just take a look at a website that I don't mind sharing, dentrepairdoctor.com. Okay, so what we want to look at is the same as information. So let's go. Okay, so this is um, this is an example of a local business markup and using same as. Uh, so I'm tying my website to a Google Plus local page. So I'm pretty much telling Google, you know, uh, this business is associated with this Google Plus profile and vice versa. So that's, uh, you know, this is a, an example of, you know, what same as is and how you utilize that. This is actually a very thin example. I like to stack my same as. So you'll probably find like 20 properties in this area here. 
And um, if you're doing local SEO, you know, you want to tie your citations here. You know, so if you're, you know, if you have your BBB, your, um, you know, your Mantas, your Yelps, you want to tie that in your same as. So you're, you're pretty much uh, taking a transparent approach. You know, you're not hiding what you're doing. So that kind of gets to my next point. So Google actually tells us what properties they, they would like us to use in our same as markup. So I'm going to click on this link here to show you guys what I'm talking about. And if you guys do not read this, please uh, go into Google search uh, developers and check out data types and guides. There's a lot of valuable information you can find here. And, you know, I just don't know why somebody wouldn't, you know, get the info from Google. It doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, um, they're showing you the knowledge graph here and how they're pulling in the social data into this knowledge graph. And they're telling us the supported social profiles here. So, of course, you got your Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, MySpace, Pinterest, SoundCloud, and Tumblr. So this is, this is a necessity, guys. You know, if you're doing SEO and you're taking what you're doing very serious, even if it's a PBN, you know, go, go the extra mile. Build these extra properties. Tie this to your website, you know, and implement schema across the profile. So they also give you examples of, um, you know, person, social profile. So you can actually see the markup, and you could copy and paste this over to your website. So what you're seeing here is um, it's a JSON LD markup, and it's a person schema type. So this would be uh, Angel Cruz, and let's just say the website would be angelcruz.org. And then what I would do here is just tie the Angel Cruise profiles. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm creating a persona, right? This is how I create a persona, right? I have Angel Cruise myself, and then I have all of my social profiles here. And then I'm going to implement this code to my website. So I'm telling Google... Google, this is my website. Here's all my personal profiles. You know, I'm an authority in the topic, so they're going to give me a little more trust for that. Simple fact. So if you validate this, um, you can see here how the search engine reads it. Okay. So it's also very important to separate your business same as properties with your persona same as properties. And I just want to ask the, the crowd if they know what I mean by that. So, I don't know, give me a yes or a no. You know what, guys, if you're following them right now, I'm watching the Facebook right now. Just go in and just give a hashtag yes or just give a hashtag no. If, if, if like, you don't know. We want to make sure that everyone's participating and follow along. This is very, very cool stuff that he's showing right now. As you've seen, He's actually showing you to where Google's actually telling you exactly what you need on every website. And that's pretty clear right there. These are the sites that you need. So if you're understanding what he's saying, just give an answer. You got everyone, you're about 50% right now, what people say. Some yes, some no, Angel. Okay, great. All right, so I'll break it down for you guys, for those of you that don't know. So I'm just going to use this debt repair as the example. So. Dent Repair Doctor is the main business. So if I type in uh, Dent Repair Doctor, Oklahoma City. So you're going to get a bunch of different results here, right? You're going to get the money site and other properties that are associated with this brand. So when you're doing your, um, your schema markup, this is how you want to make the association. So pull out a notepad. So the brand would be um, you marking up your schema under local business or if you want to kind of laser down, like let's say it's an auto, re auto repair shop or if it's a uh, chiropractor, you can do that. But you want to tie all of your branded properties under um, pretty much the, the local business markup. You, know, you don't want to associate your persona under this, this section of the markup. So I'm just going to take a few more links so you guys can kind of get a, a visual. Okay. So 
so remember, um, if we're doing same as, the same as would be this Google Map, this Yelp, this Angie's List, this Pinterest, and that would be it's a, a standalone business uh, markup. So we don't want to associate the persona, which would be Angel Cruz, or if I make a persona up, I don't want to associate that with the markup I'm using for the business. I'm going to keep them separate so Google can pretty much, they can associate the website and they could um, organize it a lot easier. So it's all about how you mark up your site. You know, you don't want to, um, you don't want to start doing this. And I've seen people doing this, and it's not the right way to do it. So they're um, they're claiming a local business schema, and then within the same as, they're starting to claim their uh, their personal profiles for persona. You kind of, you definitely got to separate it. So it's a point I want to bring across to the group. You know, it's something that's very important, and make sure you're separating the two. Uh, just uh, want to make sure everyone's clear on that. As you follow a little bit more, just like give me a yes or give me a no. Let me see where we're at right now. I'm like watching the Facebook group on the other screen. If you're following along right now, now obviously you're only going to be able to take in so much of what you're trying to do right now. That's what the replay is. We're just kind of brushing over right now, trying to give you the basic of just you can start to understand what schema is, why it's important, what you should be implementing. Right now, Angel, you went from that 50%, you're probably up to about 85, 90% right now. Okay, great, 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 great. Sounds good. All right, guys, so um, that's kind of a, a breakdown of schema. You know, there's a lot of different types of schema, and, um, you know, something that I see going on a lot is uh, recipes. So, you know, if you're doing any recipe searches, like, uh, you know, I did a red chicken enchilada excuse my spelling, uh, recipe. So you're going to start seeing a bunch of these uh, snippets come up. And it kind of reminds me of the authorship days. You know, for those of you that have been in SEO for a while, when uh, you actually tie the real author tag to your site and you have your, your picture showing up next to your SERP result, this is kind of like, like authorship 2.0, except it's not an author. It's just uh, an image tied to the recipe. So this is actually really interesting because... I'm seeing websites using this type of markup, and they're not really a recipe website. So they're they're kind of using this markup, and I'm sure you know a lot of people are testing this out, but they're actually getting these rich snippets show up for non-relevant uh, niches, should I say? And I'll get into that. I'll, I actually have a live examples to show you guys, but um, you know, there's there's definitely a lot that we could cover here. But um, something I wanted to show you guys was, you know, just to get off the schema topic, you know, we're going to jump back on it, but I want to go over something interesting, and um, I want to see how many of you guys know about getting on Google Cloud and how to leverage that to, you know, to build out these mini sites for affiliate income, AdSense, CPA. There's a number of things you can do with this, and, you know, you can get some massive results just utilizing uh, Google Cloud. So I just want to know, um, you know, how many of you guys know about this, how many of you guys do not know about this, and uh, I'm going to show you guys some pretty badass examples and, you know, what you can do to recreate it for yourselves. Guys, if you've heard of Google Cloud, give me yes, give me hashtag no. See, we got a lot of people asleep out there, guys. I'm watching the Facebook thing. I really, wanted, I really want you guys to participate on this so we can make sure that you get what's going on, that we need to know we need to go more into the information or not. So... We're getting a lot of no's that okay. they do not know about the Google Cloud, which is good. Some okay, people say they've heard of it. Uh, I, would, I would say about 60% of the people have no clue. No okay, clue. great. So I know, you know the topic of Opus is not really focused on building links, but I'm going to show you guys how this is a multi-purpose solution. So you can use this to leverage a massive amount of trust over to your money sites, over to your client sites. Or you can use this as a standalone property to make money off of. Just because Google loves Google, you know, and as you know, you can get away with spamming. Uh, and I don't want to say spamming lightly, but, you know, you can get away with uh, spamming uh, YouTube videos and getting great results. Um, you can spam uh, Blogspot, Google Sites. There's, there's a bunch of Google products that, you know, I've seen countless of times, and even with my testing, that it doesn't matter what I throw at it. As long as my anchor ratios are where they're supposed to be, uh, the properties will rank. So 
what I want to show you guys is a few examples of how this is getting accomplished. And I'll probably set one up live depending on if you know if you guys are sleeping or not. Because if uh, if you guys are into this stuff, I'll set one up live so you guys can recreate it. So let's go into the first example. So I'm going to show you um, a Google Cloud link that's ranking for a pretty competitive keyword and gets a lot of searches. So this is a 5,400 search a month uh, keyword. And the keyword is uh, GoDaddy Renewal Coupon. And there's a few variations of that. But let's take a look at the search result. It was a promo. These guys must have bumped off or something. They were just there. Let me, let me take a look. All right, let's just do this. I'll go into SCM Rush and show you guys what's going on here. If you guys do not use SCM Rush, I don't know why you're not using it. It's a great tool. I use this for a lot of research, a lot of keyword research, competitive research, and I uncover a lot of niches using this right here. So I'm going to type in this URL that I found ranking, and it's, um, it's hosted on Google Cloud. So what these guys are doing is they're leveraging the power and authority of Google, which I don't see why you wouldn't do it. All right, perfect. So you can see here, um, there's a few keywords, and they're a decent volume. Uh, cost per click is nice. And they're ranking this Google Storage Cloud link with very minimal SEO. So what that means for you guys is if you know how to set this up and you know how to do your keyword research, which you guys learn in OMG, of course, you know, you can get some of these links up ranking pretty quick and start bringing in some AdSense revenue, some CPA revenue. It all depends on the niche you're going after. But let's take a look at what these guys are doing. So they're obviously um, partnered up with GoDaddy and, you know, um, they have some type of affiliate agreement going on, and it's a very simple website. You know, they have these, uh, you know, method one click to reveal. So it's kind of like uh, they want to keep people on this page so they could actually claim whatever offer they're promoting. You know, and um, it's what it's probably like a 400 word article here. It's nothing crazy, but what's interesting is this, and I want to bring this point across to you guys is how you can get away with doing some kind of shady stuff and getting really great results. So there's uh, 58 referring domains here, and most of it is, um, they have about, I think, four 301 redirects. So I want to show you guys that, um, you know, what you can do is you can buy expired domains that aren't the best quality. You know, they can be, they're decent. Um, they don't have to be like a DA50 or nothing like that. But take a look at this. Uh, this SHFPD domain is some Chinese or whatever. I mean, this is the anchor text, but it redirects over to this storage cloud link. So what they're doing is they're buying up these uh, these cheaper domains that are somewhat spammy and just redirecting it over. And uh, they have rebuilt PBNs. So if you take a look at this site, you know, they're using exact match anchor text here. Uh, here's another exact match. Here's more uh, variation. 
So it's kind of like uh, you know what Greg teaches. Just uh, you know follow the anchor text methods that he uses, and you know you guys can kill this strategy here. But look at the PBN that they're linking from. It's just a rebuilt PBN. You know it's not even relevant, but they're getting away with it because it's Google. You know you can get away with murder. <laughs> So, um, you know, this is, I wanted to show you guys, uh, you know, what examples, you know, are out there and what you guys can do to recreate it. But uh, you can see the, the backlink profile. You know, it's nothing to brag about. It's just all spammy links coming in, you know. Angel, not to interrupt you, I, I just want to make sure that how many people are following us. When you're on the Google Cloud, how many of you guys understand why that website's ranking so well? Just, just put, give me hashtag follow. I want to make sure that you follow. It, it, give me hashtag follow or hashtag no follow. I'm like I'm like looking at the Facebook group right now. I, I want to see how many people are really following what's going on because we're really kind of brushing over this really fast. If you already understand SEO very well, right. And if anyone has questions, I'm definitely you know I'm open to answer any questions. Or if someone's stuck on on a certain you know explanation, just uh, just ask away. But uh, I mean. If if you if you're wondering why this ranks so well, look at the domain authority. You know, look at the page authority with very little links built to it. And like I said, you can get away with murder when it comes to using Google properties. So um, you're starting off with a with a huge huge authority boost and trust factor off off the rip. You know, um, it's kind of different. Like if you were to register EMD, a brand new domain, right? It's going to take you a few months because you don't have any trust. You, there's nothing established. And there is ways around the sandbox. I don't know if I should get into that, but there's ways around the sandbox with new domains, and it has to do with schema and structured data, just to say. But, um, you know, when you're doing something like this, um, you're, you're already starting with all this trust, so it's, it's a lot easier for you to get page one results. Yeah, it looks like everyone's following, so... We're good. Okay, great. All right, so this next example is a little on the gray hat, black hat area. So I just want to warn everyone that, you know, do not go out and do this and, you know, blow up your stuff. Um, if you want to do testing, I would always recommend do testing on a site other than your own site. Like use Google Storage, use Amazon Cloud. There's other properties you can do testing with. So this example, um, I was just doing some search, searching online and came across this one website that has about uh, 60,000 results indexed in the search engine. And let's take a look at it. So it's, it's another um, link that's hosted on Google Cloud, as you can see. And uh, Edgeworks, I guess that's the brand that they're using. But they have uh, 58,000 results in their index. Now look at some of these uh, SERP listings, interesting. You see some of these snippets here. So I wanna ask the audience, what do you think this person is doing that's generating this, uh, this snippet next to their search listing? I wanna see if anyone knows uh, or has an idea of what this possibly might be. We got a couple of people saying schema. You're saying schema? Definitely some schema. Okay. All right, I'll just dig right in. So we'll take a look at this URL right here. So they have about 60,000 properties indexed, and it's all the same structure. Right, so they have like an H1 tag, an image, and a very small description of what this product is, with the link going to the uh, the product to purchase it. So they have an affiliate thing going on here. So just to throw some ideas out there, you know, you could do this for Amazon. You know, you could do this for other, um, you know, other channels as well. But if we look at the markup they're using, right, we'll go back to this structured data testing tool. You'll be quite surprised. Do you guys see what's going on here? So they're testing with uh, recipe markup. And like I was talking about earlier, um, 
you know, if you're doing any type of uh, optimization for recipes, you're going to get this cool image next to your SERP result. This has nothing to do with recipes, guys. You know, this is Galaxy Light. Yet, they're getting this snippet showing for their result. So, what I want to tell the audience is, um, this is definitely gray areas. You know, there's... This is, you know, this is not white hat at all, but if you're going to test with some of this stuff, test it on some of these other properties, like Google, because Google will not, it will not uh, penalize Google. I promise you that. It's not going to happen. So you can see here, like, they're, they're pretty much doing that across all of these different products that they're selling. You know, we'll check this one out. It'll be the same thing. How many guys and, have found this information yeah, yeah. really, really, really cool? Give me like hashtag hell yeah. That, that, that you've seen to where people are taking a recipe schema and are using it to get a snippet by something that they're trying to sell to show you how powerful schema can be if it's used right to do certain stuff. Turning Google against Google, creating <laughs> a website with the power of Google, and then using a recipe markup schema to get a snippet behind it to get some affiliate stuff going on. And the guy's probably selling some stuff here. So, but like, I just wanted to show you guys what's like possible scheme, and Angel's amazing at this sort of stuff. You know, if you're liking what you're seeing, just give me hell yeah. It, it's, it's okay to know, listen, we all know this. If we create one damn PBN, I'm like, sorry, but that's black hat. That's what considered it is. We're like manipulating Google. We're going to get to terms of services. Let's, we, all, we all break it. I mean, that's just what it is. But yeah, you, you need to know this sort of stuff. If you build a link, right. you broke their service, their term of service. Right, right. Yeah. So you have to know how far you can go to know where the limit is. And when you see this sort of stuff, it gives you ideas of what's possible outside of link building about how you can be smart to make money. So this is really cool stuff here. You guys should be really eating this stuff up. Please continue. Please. Okay, great. Thanks. So, yeah, that's uh, an example I wanted to show you guys, you know, with um, Google Cloud utilizing um, recipe markup to show some of these snippets. And I could promise you that, you know, this guy is probably making a killing um, just due to the long tail keywords that he's, you know, the long tail searches he's bringing in. Because he's not ranking, like if I was to type in uh, Galaxy Light, he's not on page one, but I'm sure he's coming up for other type of terms or, you know, there's just so much uh, results here. Like, how are you not pulling in traffic, you know? So just think of it think of it um, in, a, in a spectrum of how you could benefit, right? What can you do to take this strategy to make it work for you, right? If you're, if you're pushing Amazon SEO products, you know, this, this is perfect. And um, I actually, um, I think one of the results here goes over some of it. Let me see. Um, one second, guys. Okay, great. So I'll just go into this next example. And uh, what we're going to look at is a huge government website, and I'm sure some of you guys know about this. And they're actually using, uh, they're not using JSON-LD here. They're using microdata and a schema product to get a rich snippet. So if you do a search for uh, treat, uh, treatment approaches for women, uh, they come up number one, and you can see this cool little snippet here. And I pulled the uh, the validated code from their website, and it's showing on the left right here. So um, you can see that they're uh, implementing product markup. Uh, this is the title of you know the the page, a description, and then I I um, implemented the uh, the image code that's showing in the search result. So this is all tying together. So it's interesting to see that you know some of these huge government websites are also leveraging this the strategy. And um, let me show you guys how they're also uh, actually they're doing this for a ton of different pages on their site. Let me do this real quick. So if you do a site search, you'll get all the results for that specific page website. So you can see here uh, they have a bunch of stuff going on. So I would encourage uh, the viewers to, you know, study some of this, you know, um, take some of these URLs, throw it into the structured data tool, and just study the, you know, the information you get back. You know, you'll be surprised what gems you can find with some of these, you know, government websites, you know, um, 
you wouldn't think that these huge websites are manipulating uh, search engines, but they are. You know, they're using some of this, you know, some of this tactic here, but it's working amazingly for them. You know, and they're trusted, so it's kind of like, you know, Google's not going to hit them for it. But you can see they have a ton of results showing this type of snippet. So just going back to the other example, it's a you know, similar example, but a different resource. Okay, and I want to talk a little bit about structured content using tables. So I'm sure you guys seen uh, a bunch of results coming up where you're getting a table snippet, you know, at the top. So it's, it takes up a huge amount of real estate on page one. You know, so structured data is obviously becoming more prominent in the latest search engines, you know, but if you're implementing tables, you know, you can actually take up a majority of page one with, uh, you know, one of these snippets. So I'm going to show you a few examples of what that looks like. So this is a, a niche that I'm in. Uh, I don't know if you guys actually want to target it. You know, there's a lot of people here, but um, it's an AdSense related niche and you know, this is a result that I've recently seen, and it's um, one of the competitor sites. I'm actually uh, right here, just play NJ Lottery. But uh, they have a table implemented on their website, and this is the result they're getting. So anyone that's doing a search, and mind you, this keyword gets a boatload of searches, about 200,000 searches a month. You know, if, if you're coming on page one after doing a search and you see this table, it's going to get so much clicks. I mean, the CTR on this is probably like, you know, it's, it's definitely above 30%, which is the normal for number one results. You know, I, I don't want to put an exact number, but I would definitely say that it's above 30%. So, you know, they're getting a ton of click-throughs here, you know, which translates into AdSense cash for this website. So that's one example here. And another example is interesting because... A lot of people here are, you know, doing affiliate stuff and they're, you know, they're ranking websites, uh, review websites. So if you implement tables on your review affiliate site and you show up for some of these snippets, you're going to make a decent amount of coin on it. You know, you're just taking up a lot of space on page one and you just look like more of an authority. Like you're actually, you know, you're providing some decent content here. People want to know, you know, is this product FDA cleared? It is, you know, what's the price? So they don't really have to search. They're getting the information right away. So, you know, that's why this is so valuable, you know, for you guys to start digging into some of this stuff because, you know, if you leverage it the right way, you know, there's is this unlimited potential and it's it's just starting to come up in search. Like it's not something that's been around for a very long time. It's becoming more prominent for some of these uh, buyer intent keywords, which is very cool. So here's an example of the table. I extracted the HTML on their site, and it's you know it's a very simple HTML um, you know that that I extracted, and you don't have to be um, HTML savvy or nothing. You know, just bring on a developer, uh, have them create an HTML table for you. It's no biggie. You know, it's not really the biggest deal, but uh, this is pretty much what they did, and. This this is not associated with schema, but this is more associated with the structured content. So I just want to you know differentiate the two. So um, this is the HTML, and this is what it looks like, you know, just raw HTML, and then this is with the CSS here on the bottom. So you know this website that uses this table, you know, they're getting that awesome snippet, you know, which is probably translating into a decent amount of cash for some of these keywords. You know, so that's something that I also wanted to share with you guys is, uh, you know, just if you're planning out your content and you can implement a table on your content or on your page, do it. You know, if you can raise the chance of getting a feature snippet, why wouldn't you do it? It just does not make sense to me. So everything going forward that I'm doing personally, is, you know, I'm going to include some of this markup and structured content to my sites. You know, it's just, it just is a better user experience. You know, people are getting the information they're looking for. They don't really have to dig around too much. It's right in your face. You know, so I, you know, I would encourage anyone to, you know, to start doing more research around this type of structured content and start implementing it, you know, as soon as possible. So, uh, Kyan, I don't know. Do you want to get a feel for the crowd? Are they, uh, are they sleeping? Are they awake? Well, how would you guys like to see a live example that he, like, promised you? We, we have about 400 people in the webinar right now. We get about 200 lives. Maybe we can convince him to do that. So, 
I'm like watching the Facebook group right now. Okay. And uh, let me t tell you what, so everyone can see what's going on. Let me go ahead and take control really, really quick, so we sure. can so we can see the Facebook group, and uh, so everyone can see what's going on, and uh, everyone should be able to see my screen right now. Let me go ahead and refresh. And this has been a really cool lesson to just kind of get you guys aware of what schema can do. Like Derek said, we've like brushed over it. You guys are given so many hashtags right now that it's locking up even the group. So it looks like they're pretty excited about it. I would love to be able to scroll down, but my light page is 100% locked. So uh, looks like everyone's typing live on there. All right, so. I've got it, yeah, I've like got it on the other screen. I do just can't see it on this one. There, see it failed on me. Oh, well, yes. I'm just gonna go ahead. And, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it back to you. Okay, and, great. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and take it. And so, so we've got about 125 right now, and uh, I like I like think we have enough to get there. But we just crashed Facebook, so I think there could be a way. Let's do it. Okay, great. So I'm gonna share the screen now. Okay. All right, can you guys see my screen? You can. Okay. So here's the good thing, guys. Uh, you can actually get on Google Cloud for free, and I believe it's for 200 days or something like that. You know, you guys can use this service. And uh, for those of you that don't know, there's a ton of stuff you can do here on Google Cloud, but we're not going to get into that right now. We're going to get into how we can leverage this to uh, pretty much you know make some money and get some crazy rankings pretty quickly so I'm gonna log in here but you can see here try for free so you guys go ahead and sign up so I'm gonna log into the console here So I don't want nobody to get confused. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff here. It might throw you off, but I'm just going to I'm gonna navigate this where you guys can just, you know, simply do what I'm doing, you know, just to make your life a lot easier. So the first thing you want to do is once you're logged into Google Cloud, um, you want to go to what's called uh, storage. So this is a section called storage, and then you're going to click on storage here. Okay, and the next step is uh, you're going to create what's called a bucket, right? And we're going to call this bucket, let's just call it, uh, since I'm talking about, since I went over the snore example, let's just call this uh, stop snoring. Then you can select, uh, you know, different areas depending on where you're at. I'll just I'll keep it at United States and create. Okay, so this part is uh, is going to require some HTML knowledge, or like I said earlier, if you don't know much about HTML, you can bring on a developer, and uh, they could pretty much give you a, a template or something like that, where you guys can just implement it real quick. So uh, I like to use this uh, live editor HTML because I'm not I'm not the best at HTML, so I like to um, mess around with it and have a preview of what it looks like. So this is more user friendly for you guys that aren't, you know, super proficient at it. So I already have an article loaded up, and um, what I did here is implement kind of like a table of contents just to make it more user friendly. And uh, it's like Wikipedia, you know, Wikipedia ranks great uh, because how they structure their content, and they have a million pages. But you know, I'm I'm seeing uh, that if you're utilizing some of this, um, you know, page jumps, hashtags, you're actually getting somewhat of a benefit with longer type content. So this is like uh, 750 words here. So um, before I upload this to Google Cloud, I want to add some schema. So I'm going to take this right here. And I'm going to throw that right 
where the head starts because I want this to be the, the first thing that the search engine finds when they're crawling my site. You know, so I'm doing it for obvious reasons. Um, if you're doing local business with multi-location, do not put it in the head of, um, of your uh, template because it'll be site-wide and it can mess you up big time. Um, in that case, uh, you have to do it page by page. So that's just a quick tip if you're doing multi-location for local business. So um, in this example, um, I don't have all of these URLs populated yet because it's just an example for today. But if I did, I would add it here. So I would add uh, my main domain, which could be like howtostopsnoring.com. Right? And then I would add all the profiles that are tied to this howtostopsnoring.com. So this could be uh, you know, sites.google which is actually one of my favorite properties. So how to stop snoring. This could be the Twitter for the business. So Twitter, just don't mind the typos. I'm just freestyling here. And then we'll do Facebook here. All right, you guys get the point though, right? So um, this would be all of the profiles that are associated with this main website and then persona would be the person the person I'm using so just for shits and giggles I'm using this uh, Dr. Josh guy who he's an authority in the space so I'm just gonna throw him in here and this is an example guys don't don't take it too literal you know just um, I just want to show you guys how this can be done Okay. All right, great. So I added my schema and I'm going to save this document here. So chaotic storing ways to deal with it. So the next step is uh, you're going to go back to Google Cloud and you are going to click upload files. And then we're going to find this right here, chaotic storing ways to deal with it. All right, so you're going to click on this, and then you're going to share publicly. And then it's going to generate a public link. And these links, they index well. Um, and like I said, you know, if you want to start messing around with some Amazon, some recipe markup strategies, you know, why not use Google? You know, they're gonna, it's just going to rank well. So here is a live uh, cloud example, you know, in less than five minutes. You know, you guys can do this very quickly as long as you have your HTML document ready. You know, simply upload it to your bucket that you created. And then, you know, this link, um, if I wanted to, you know, if I have a, a snoring website, I would use this uh, website and link it back to my site and then just build links to this property just to boost it up a bit, you know, and uh, actually get rankings uh, for, you know, for both listings. So I could rank for uh, the Google API link and then the money site. So you can use this for multiple reasons, but, you know, this is a um, very quick strategy you can do. And you can see here, it took me less than five minutes. You know, I also have a table here in the bottom. You know, it's, it's not a pretty table, but it's a table. So, you know, once I index this page, I'm going to see if I can uh, trigger a table for this long tail keyword here. So that's how you get on Google Cloud, guys. You know, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. I'll show you another example for local. So uh, let me see. We'll look at this Oklahoma dent repair. I'll take a look at this one here. So this is, um, a, you know, this is kind of a, I'm not going to say it's 100% responsible for my site ranking well, but I think it contributed to it. So what I did here was, 
I created a uh, a custom direction map uh, going to this business location from different accounts, accounts that are branded for this Oklahoma City, right? And um, just you can see here what I did, right? So I have this embed of you know from this Washington Ave place over to the business. I have an embed from this Night Hill Road over to the business. And then uh, you could this is a link to the actual map. So I have a few embeds here. So these are what's considered micro actions that are taken. So you know if you're doing any local SEO and you know you're looking for a business, you know th there's a you know click here for directions or click here to call. You know Google's tracking all of that. You know, you know people are you know requesting directions. That's definitely a positive signal you're sending to the business. So I'm using Google Cloud to leverage some of this. Here. And uh, here's another example. This is just uh, directions from. So this is a custom map. You know something that Derek teaches a lot. And this is just um, a breakdown of what you see up here. So these are all these different locations, and the custom map ties it all together. So you can see directions from that Washington address, from the Knights Road address, and it's all going back to the business. So these are like little uh, tricks you guys can start utilizing, you know, just to you know test around, see what works for you. And then I uh, just have some reviews here. Uh, just people that left reviews on the local business. I have a link to their profile, and you know, it's, this is all correlating together. So you can use this for local, for uh, CPA, affiliate. Amazon doesn't matter. You know, you can you can find ways to make this work for you. Is the point. And um, <clears throat> let me see if I can give you guys something else. So we'll just look uh, look at that website, and I'll show you guys something cool here. So we'll go to uh, Mobile Dent Repair OKC. So if you guys aren't familiar, OKC they get slammed with hailstorms. So that's why I got into this dent repair business. Uh, but you can see here, um, you know, map result number one, organic number one. And this map right here actually uh, helps sustain some of these rankings. And I'll show you what I did to solidify it. So uh, how many of you guys uh, are familiar with injecting schema into maps and YouTube videos? Hey, Cotton. I was, I, I, I like, I was on mute. Uh, okay. Let me see what we got. I'm like, I was like talking and I realized it was muted. Oh, it's all um, good. Yeah, it looks like people saying not really. Yeah, we're, we're like getting a lot of no's. So. Okay, good. Great, great. So I'm going to show you guys how to inject schema into your maps and into your YouTube videos and actually have it validated. All right, so I'm going to go to Blogspot and show you guys an example of this. All right, guys, so this is an example I did for that dent repair site. So this map that's ranking number two for all the keywords that you see right here, what I did is, I, you know, after I created the map, I generated the, um, the iframe. So you're going to do the same thing with YouTube. You're going to generate an iframe code, and it's going to look just like this, right? So with the markup that you implemented on your site, what you're going to do is right before the iframe closes, you're going to paste the schema markup, right? You're going to update it, and what you're going to see is simply a, a map embed. So let's take a look. So 
So just going back to some of the original points, right? We want to help Google understand all of this entity-based data that we're providing, you know, schema information. So why doesn't, you know, why wouldn't somebody, you know, implement schema within some of these other properties, you know, like, uh, you know, Google Maps, YouTube videos, Google Storage, uh, Amazon Cloud. There's so many different ways you can do this, you know. If you have access to editing HTML on a property, then best believe you can add schema markup in there. So what I want to show you guys is this, right? This is the public URL for this link, this map embed. And if I go back to the structured data testing tool, let's see validates. There you go, local business. So it's a sneaky way to, to sneak schema into other properties that you do not own. So it's just a tip that you guys can start implementing right away, and I'm getting phenomenal results doing it. You know, um, this is a perfect case study to share with you guys of, you know, what type of results I've generated using it. And it helped my website you know, was floating between, you know, four or five. It was stuck for a month or so. And then once I started embedding this uh, schema injected map, actually help, uh, you know, it just helped this map rank better and the website and the snack pack. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like a domination type strategy. You know, I have, you know, three listings on page one, which is cool. And uh, it gets calls, which is great. You know, whenever there's a, like a hailstorm in the area, uh, they'll just get a huge influx of calls. And, you know, it does decent, decent uh, side business here. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. You know, it's a schema injected map, and you could do the same exact thing with YouTube. So instead of this map, it could be a video. You just swap out the link uh, with the YouTube, and, and you can simply do the same thing. Pretty cool stuff, man. Sure thing. What so, do you guys yeah. think, man? Is it, you guys, we haven't done it in a while. If, if so far, a lot of you, this is the first time you've been introduced to Schema. We showed you what's possible. So give me a hashtag, mind blown, if you've just seen some of the possibilities that you can do with this and why it's important that you dig into this a little bit more. Now, I do know that in the coming weeks, we're going to be digging a whole lot deeper into Schema. And, guys, I don't want you to worry about what hats what. To build a link, it's black hat. I'm just sorry. If, if it's not natural, if, if Joe Blow that owns his blog just happened to run across you and think you're the coolest bastard in the world and just does a link without telling you, that's what Google wants. So let's not worry about that. So we're getting a lot of mind blowns, a lot of hashtag mind blowns. I want you to thank him like that. Show him that you appreciate what he's shown you. I want you guys to see what was possible, the different things outside the box. It's what Opus has been about. Angel's one of these guys who continually thinks outside the box. I'm telling you guys this. You need to know how far you can go. And I said this earlier. How far you can go so you know what's possible. Even if you want to do some stuff with CPA, if you want to do stuff with affiliate, this is the sort of sneaky stuff that these guys do and you're going to have to get on top of if you want to compete with some of these guys. When they're able to turn Google against Google and let you utilize it for power and stuff to their websites. I'm not necessarily telling you that I want you to go out and just start doing all this stuff for your clients until you actually know exactly what you're doing. This is just kind of an entry to show you guys exactly what's possible. Ryan, it's some pretty cool stuff uh, uh, that he's like shown today, especially for people that have never seen Skin before, don't you think? Yeah, this is advanced stuff, man. This is, this is really good. I mean, this gets into technical SEO. This is um, really good information. I mean, some of the the best hacks that are left in SEO come from schema markup. It's kind of like the white hat way to the gray hat stuff, you know what I mean? Right, exactly. exactly. No, this is this is super, super powerful stuff. I don't think you guys know how lucky you were to see some of this sort of stuff. It really the sort of stuff that no one really wants to share or that no one really wants to show, uh, you know? Well, I think a lot of people just don't know how to do it the right way, you know what I mean? I think that if, if, if people are looking to pick up um, some extra work. I think if you can really learn how to do schema markups, it's an incredibly valuable thing to resell to other agencies. Oh, sure. hell yeah. yeah. Definitely. I mean, I would hire someone. <laughs> right. Oh, no. I mean, 
like a schema wizard right now, he's worth his weight in gold right now. Uh, I mean, for sure. That's, for I sure. mean, that's definitely for sure. So wh when you hear all of us talk about that, so Derek, what do you think, man? We want to hear from you too, so you're just not here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Angel, you know, I've worked with him for a long time, and he's more obsessed with uh, schema than anyone I know on the planet. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so he's, uh, yeah, he's definitely testing a lot of new things. He's always like, hey, check this out. Do this, do this. I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, a lot of the stuff, you can just do the, like, even just the basic, you know, setting up the profiles, and it's going to be a lot more brand, uh, tying the brand together, right? And it's just going to help all your other properties rank, especially if a lot of people are having problems with, um, like, reputation management and that, that kind of stuff, right? So um, if you're searching for their brand, this is going to really help bring up all their profiles. And I, I've seen over like Angel and I've been testing, like using the same as markup with, you know, um, like a hundred properties at a time where there's, there's not really a limit to how much you can use right now. All right. So it's, uh, it's definitely the way everything's moving. Uh, and you know, like sometimes micro data, like we find that micro data works still better sometimes, but now it's, you know, uh, it's going the other way. So, it's it's good to know both. Uh, Angel, did you want to – did you give them any uh, simple, like, generators or anything like that? Oh, uh, yeah, we, we could actually share the uh, – the, I think it's the Jason Flynn tool or something. Yeah, or maybe just, yeah the one that gave you a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can pull it up for you guys. Uh, James D. Flynn. This is a simple generator. I mean, I like to do everything by hand. I have uh, a lot of templates I use, you know, in this yeah. uh, live editor, but – uh, yeah, this you, is you one know, of the only ones that yeah. didn't spit out errors all the time. Exactly. It's like a little scary to me, so I'm a little frightened looking at that profile picture. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a creep, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a <serial> killer. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you guys can use this here. Um, and you could just go to Google uh, Developers, and they'll give you some sample markup. You guys can just copy and paste it. And uh, the reason why I do it by hand is because I like having more control over it. You know, I'm sure I'm, I know there's other products out there in the market, but I'm just I'm an old school guy. I like doing it by hand. You know, so it's always good to start with something that works, and then you know you're not missing a semicolon at the end of the line, and you <laughs> can't figure yeah, exactly. it out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Good stuff. So that's that's for you guys right there, Angel. If you could do me a favor, can sure. you post that link in the Facebook group? So they can just get it. And yeah. It's, yeah, so that way everyone, or post it uh, in the webinar uh, chat box so, like, everyone gets it also. Probably, probably the easiest way. Oh, wait, I think I need to send it. Someone already posted it for you. In another one. Okay, great. Got to make sure he marked up his picture to pop up everywhere, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just hope I opened up a lot of minds, and, you know, my goal today was to just help you guys think outside the box, get new ideas, and just be unorthodox sometimes, you know, just try, take a risk, try something new. Uh, but like Kai said, don't blow up your client's site, you know, do testing on other websites, you know, use Google itself, use Amazon Cloud, you know, you could get away with some, some stuff there. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you need to show, Angel, or? Um, I, th I think we're good. Good. Okay. Unless, you know, anybody has specific questions or, you know, wherever you want to take it, it's all good. Yeah, I'm just going to take back over the control. I want you to be able to see my screen right now. Guys, what sure. I want you to do is I want to scroll all the way down. I want you to thank Angel. Give me hashtag Angel again. I, what did I tell you before? That, uh, you guys' minds were going to get opened up when you, like, came here. You're going to see stuff about schema that you've never seen was possible before. We delivered on that, and I, and I knew that Angel would with, uh, you know, as much as I knew that he was into it doing some things that I've really never seen a lot of people do before. And uh, I've, like, learned a lot from him as uh, well. So, you know, you can learn from anybody. And it's, and it's people, once you get passionate about something and he's been digging into it, this is what's possible. And uh, so remember, everything, the replay is going to be here. I know it's a lot for you to take in. What we wanted to do is just brush over, for those of you that have never heard it before, you know, some of you have only been in SEO right now for about seven months. You're going to keep learning new things and new things. This is the kind of stuff that you stack your information on. Uh, yes, you can rank without it, but, you know, you've heard Ryan say it. You've heard me say it. You've heard Derek say it. And it's an incredible skill to learn how to have. 
and I encourage you to dig deeper into this. We're going to get into it a little bit deeper over the next few months and really dig a little bit deeper down into it so you guys can have this. But what I want you to do is thank him for being here. He's, uh, you know, came here on his own time. He's not getting paid to do this. Uh, you know, you like showing him that you appreciate that by, like, thanking him would absolutely do it. Uh, I, like, know that you guys are asking for a lot more stuff than what we had, but I think the Angels over-delivered today. And I, like, know that we'd love to have him on here to go through a bunch of other stuff. So it was incredible for him just to do that. So thank you, Angels. Appreciate it, Karin. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Great. Great. Guys, continue to thank him if you haven't. You know, before you log off, please just say a thank you for him. If you've been enjoying what Opus has been about so far, that's been so far outside the box so far, you know, let us know that too. You know, we like love bringing all you new stuff, new creative things that we've never brought to OMG before. We're not saying that it's totally new, but it's new to OMG. We want to continue to bring you fresh stuff and show you things that you've never seen before in Opus. With that, we're just going to close it out. I'm going to let all the guys say their last words, and we'll close it out. Next week, we'll be back with something incredible. And uh, I'm, I've got my hand up in the air with about two or three different things that we could lead with. But uh, this is one of these things, guys, I'm telling you, I encourage you, re-watch this replay. It'll probably be up by tomorrow. Rewatch it. This is powerful stuff. And a lot of you are asking, you know, you're worried about black hat of this. Schema itself is not. It's safe if you're doing it to do the same as and to tie everything together. It's the safest thing you can do. So with that, Derek, any last words? Uh, not really. Just... Uh... It was a good, great show tonight. <laughs> Can't Absolutely. wait for uh, next week. So. Absolutely. Ryan, any last words? Yeah, I definitely rewatched that. Like I said, this is actually not black hat at all. This is incredibly white hat. This is stuff that, like I said, brands are doing. I mean, there's, there's a good opportunity to learn this and make some money off of it uh, right away for sure. So definitely watch it again. App, yeah, app. even if you look at like some something like Pinterest and all that, like when you search those brands, you have the search box underneath the, the on the search engine there on the on uh, Google. That's that's all schema. So yeah, I even put that on client sites sometimes. Absolutely, it's, it's incredibly insightful webinar for everyone. And Angel, I'm going to leave you with the last words of of, of what you want to say, anyone before we before we call it a night. Sure. Well, uh, I just want to thank everyone who attended the webinar. You know, it's, it was an absolute pleasure being a part of this. You know, Opus kicks ass. You know, we want to take things to the new level. So I just want to encourage everyone to just step out of your comfort zone, think outside the box, and, you know, just test things out and see what works for you, you know. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. So uh, I just want to encourage people to just, you know, be, be more innovative and, you know, apply what the coaches teach you because this stuff works. You know, it changed my life, and it changed many people's lives. So I encourage you guys to keep pushing forward. Great stuff. Angel, once again, thank you. If you haven't had time to do so, do it. We'll be back next Wednesday at the same time, 8 p.m. Another incredible lesson. We'll reveal a little bit more about what it's going to be in the future day. Sounds good, Kyan. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.